Hi, welcome to A Paramedics World. My name is Ezra, the creator of this channel. My goal was to create a channel where EMTs and paramedics of all walks of life, whether it be municipal, private, fire, hospital based, regardless, could have a site where we could talk about issues that affect our industry, uh, where we could discuss protocols and equipment, where we could talk about uh, regulation that affects us in our industry, where we could talk about industry changes, um, medical direction, everything and everything, every topic as it relates to EMS um, is fair game on this channel. Uh, we are planning on structuring it in episode fashion, so every episode will have a theme um, and we'll explore that theme a little bit. Uh, as we progress, hopefully we'll bring uh, more exciting topics, uh, bring in guest speakers. Um, so it's our hope that with the help of a community, we can grow this channel into something fantastic. There really isn't anything like it that I've been able to find um, where uh, an independent creator has the ability to talk about these subjects and bring these subjects uh, into conversation. So. Sit back, relax, enjoy Excited Delirium, and I hope you like our site. If you do, um, subscribe, hit the notification box, and enjoy. Thank you for being here. So, welcome to the first episode of A Paramedics World. Uh, today's topic or this episode's topic is going to be uh, excited delirium. Uh, the protocol that we follow for the treatment of excited delirium in, uh, in Broward County and throughout the county, most departments are on a regional protocol, is 2.5.2 violent combative and or excited delirium patients. So what exactly is excited delirium? The exact definition is a state in which a person is in a psychotic and extremely agitated state. Mentally, the patient is unable to focus and process any rational thought. The condition is brought on by an overdose on stimulant or hallucinogenic drugs, drug withdrawal, or psychiatric patients who have not taken their medication the way they're supposed to. Um, so these are all potential contributing factors. However, there are others. Uh, individuals who have uh, strokes, alcohol, hypoxia, and hypoglycemia uh, can also become impaired and become violent. I'm sure most of you have experienced patients who had significant head injuries or traumas and uh, they've become irrational, aggressive, combative, so that's something to keep in mind as well, to rule out any trauma with these individuals uh, before we move forward in a treatment plan, all right? Um, obviously, if the patient's not violent, we wanna just observe them and, and uh, make sure that we're doing a very good assessment uh, to determine their uh, hemodynamic stability, okay? However, if they do become violent and, they're, and they are violent, then obviously it's gonna be very difficult to uh, to assess them by any means uh, or to assess them uh, effectively. Uh, getting a blood pressure, a pulse, a respiratory rate, these things are gonna be nearly impossible. Uh, oftentimes these individuals are gonna be nonverbal. Um, they may be nude, uh, usually overdoses on stimulants and hallucinogenics. Um, some, of the, some of the methamphetamine type drugs cause them to become very heated and hot, uh, increases their core body temperature. So they disrobe, take off all their clothes, they're naked, they're screaming, they're irrational, they're difficult to, uh, to obviously do an assessment and communicate with. So um, that's one thing that we have to work through. Usually by the time uh, EMS enters the scene, PD has already uh, somewhat uh, restrain these individuals and, and now we show up to kind of do an assessment and determine um, what some of the causative factors may be. Um, obviously we want to protect the airway if we can put them on O2, we want to put them on O2 especially if their pulse ox is below 94%. Um, we want to think about doing a finger stick if we can and getting a BGL. Um, obtaining a core body temperature again with a very violent or combative patient that's not going to be realistic. Um, and then think about how we want to restrain them. Um, in the past, 
there's never really been any question to restrain a physically combative individual, we've utilized physical restraints, uh, whether they be posies or whether we've used sheet method around the torso or the chest. Um, we've accomplished it in one of those ways typically. Um, but today's day and age, um, there are a lot of uh, issues that can arise out of physically restraining a patient. Uh, first and foremost, um, the EMS providers that are on scene can be injured by an extremely combative or aggressive patient trying to physically restrain him or her. Um, secondly, the patient can become injured and, and increase their potential for injury. Um, and then individuals on scene, police officers, uh, so we want to protect the patient and we want to protect the responders. So uh, wrestling them down and tying them up and using physical restraints nowadays is just not a realistic intervention. Um, chemical restraints, a lot easier. Um, still requires a little bit of, of physical exertion to get the patient still enough uh, so that you can administer the medication. Uh, the medication of choice, hands down, is, is uh, ketamine. Uh, extremely effective, has very few side effects, um, really doesn't impact the central nervous system in as far as respiratory depression or hemodynamic instability. It's just a very good drug. It's fast acting. Um, and, uh, and its effects happen fairly quickly. It can be given IM or IN, and the preferred dose is uh, four milligrams per kilogram IM or two milligrams per kilogram intranasally through a MAD device. And that can be repeated for a maximum dose of 400. Typically, most systems around here start off at 250 uh, milligrams and then max out to 400 if they need it. In our experience, we haven't had too many patients who've required a second dose. The, the problem is, is that ketamine now is on a national shortage list and is very difficult to get a hold of. Some systems who have relationships with local hospitals uh, are able to get the drugs from the hospitals uh, and their stocks are fine. We do not have that relationship. So um, we've run out of ketamine. We extended its, uh, its expiration date through our medical director for a little while. Uh, and then we decided to move on to a new drug. Uh, and that new drug is Geodon. So I'm not gonna go too much into Geodon. I'll let you folks uh, research it, but it is an antipsychotic medication, similar in nature to uh, ketamine. It has sedative properties and limited, uh, limited effects on hemodynamic stability. So uh, it maintains a respiratory function and blood pressure and all these things aren't uh, affected uh, really that much by this medication. So we give it um, at 10 milligrams in half a cc, uh, IM only, this medication is not given IN, uh, although in theory it could be. Um, and today was actually the first time that we've given it to a, a real patient. And I'm advised that it worked extremely well in just about the same time frame that, that ketamine does. Um, so our medical director has used this medication before. He's confident in its effects and its abilities. And, uh, and today was the first time that it was utilized successfully. The only problem with this medication, uh, if you can refer to it as a problem is, is that it comes in a tablet form inside of this vial. Uh, then the responders have to draw up uh, sterile water, mix the medication, and then draw the medication up and deliver it to the patient. So when you're dealing with an extremely combative and aggressive patient and the scene is very hectic and chaotic, uh, those are more steps than we like our responders to have to go through to deliver this medication. However, uh, out of necessity and the lack of ketamine out there, um, we've decided to give this medication a shot. Now, our protocol does allow to give benzodiazepines, Valium Versed, Ativan, um, but in our experience, they have limited effectiveness on, on a true excited delirium. Uh, that's just our personal experience, certainly not a, a scientific study. Um, and there is some conversation, although I haven't seen any specific research on the subject, but there is some conversation that 
um, that Versed in particular can cause some uh, chemistry shifts uh, and might cause some acidosis in the excited delirium patient. Has anyone, have any of you folks seen anything about that? If you have and you have uh, actual information about that, go ahead and drop me an email uh, or uh, make some comments with some links on this post uh, so that I can check that out a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, our, our protocol also allows for the, the delivery of Haldol, uh, and I, I believe some agencies in the area have it. We do not. Um, we, uh, our medical director feels that it's not as effective as Geodon, uh, and that there are too many potential side effects. And one of the biggest side effects is um, it can cause those dystonic reactions if it's not given with Benadryl. Um, and, and that can cause some additional problems with the patient. So uh, once we give the medication, obviously we want to monitor the sedated patient, um, make sure that respiratory function is, is operating fine and that hemodynamic stability is being maintained, uh, and then transport them to the nearest facility, and the most appropriate facility for them. Usually, as far as we're concerned, um, we typically take a police officer in the back of the rescue the transport unit with us so that just in case the patient wakes up and starts becoming combative again, uh, we have that, that additional assistance in the back of the truck. Um, expedite the transport code three to the closest facility and that pretty much sums up our protocol. So if you folks are doing anything different or you have any different feedback, different medications, I, I know there's several antipsychotics out there um, or doing anything differently, uh, hit me up, let me know, drop me a comment below. Um, again, this is our very first episode. We're gonna continue on with these type of topics, going over the protocols, the medications, maybe some equipment. So uh, any input, feedback, or information that you have, drop it down below, send me an email. Uh, I'll attach the link for our regional protocols down below in the description of the video. So if you wanna look at those, you can. Uh, be safe out there and have a great day.